Good morning, good morning, truly this is the day that the Lord our God has made. The Bible tells us to rejoice and be glad in it. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. And so on this Sunday, we're grateful to be back in the house of the Lord on this last Sunday in the month of October. Look, God has been so good and kind to us, and so we owe him a praise. We owe him worship. And so when you are here or virtually, we want y'all to sing and shout, praise the Lord with us, because he is good and greatly to be praised. And so we ask you all to stand there here in the sanctuary, those of you cooking, uh, you're brushing your teeth, wherever you are, sing the songs of Zion with us as we are led in worship by our minister of music, Minister Shante Noy.
morning will come from Psalm 100. joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord he is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures throughout all generations. Amen. That is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. You can be seated in his presence.
the one who protects and provides and forgives and restores and loves and is compassionate and forgiving and the one who protects us in such a way that oh God that we can't even protect ourselves from ourselves Father we thank you that you are our Father Even in a season where so many people have lost their father. <laughs> you are the father. Father, we say thank you so much for having an unconditional love towards us. That your word says that while we were yet sinners, that's how much you loved us. And that's how much you continue to love us. That while we were yet sinners while we were actively sinning. <laughs> yes. you, Not when we got it together, but while we were actively doing what we were doing, oh God, while we were actively seeking to crucify you, and I say we because of people, we as a people, yes. oh God, are the reason why you had to die in such a heinous death. While we were sinning, yes. you chose, you made the conscious decision <laughs> oh my God. to still die for us. Yes. When we didn't even know that we needed saving. Thank you, Lord. you chose to die for us. You thought we were worth it. You, In the midst of all the funk and all the stink and all the dirtiness, oh God. We thank you that you said it's all right. My blood still works. We thank you, O oh God, that even as the elders say, O oh God, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. Father, we thank you that it continues to give us strength from day to day to day to day to day to day, O oh God. And it will never lose its power. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. That nothing can ever cleanse us <laughs> like your blood, O oh God. Even, Father, when we hear such negativity towards us, oh God, by family and friends and colleagues and co-workers, by the system, oh God, we thank you, oh God, that your blood is so pure and so efficacious that it can clean all the dirt and the grime, oh God. What can wash away my sin? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again when the world seeks to break you over and over? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is the flow, oh God, that makes us white as snow. Thank you. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you that you died, Father. Thank you. Thank you, God, for forgiving us. Thank you, God. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you. Father, thank you for healing us. Thank you. Thank you for being patient with us, God. Thank you. Thank you for rocking us in the middle of the night when we just feel like we're by ourselves, God. Thank you. Thank you when the weight is too heavy, God. You carry us. Thank you. Thank you when we feel like we're by ourselves. You remind us that I'm that friend that's sticking closer than any brother. I just say thank you. We say thank you. Father, we say we love you, God. Father, even in this moment, because we know that you are so powerful. Father, the reality is that someone is standing right now, kneeling. Someone is at home. Someone is in another country just saying, Lord, I just need your help. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. And I'm standing in the need of prayer. God, I need you to open the door. God, I need you to make the way. God, I need you to heal my children. God, I need you to do it again. Thank you, God. God, 
we thank you that your ears are so attentive to our cry. Even when we don't understand the why. Yeah. Father, we thank you that we can trust the who. We thank you, God, that we can take you at your word every day. Because your word is alive and it's quick. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So, Father, even while we're going through, we thank you that your word brings us life. That it continues to remind us, oh God, that if we first seek the kingdom of God and your righteousness, that everything that we need will be added, oh God. Your word reminds us that if my people who are called by my name will just humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal the land. Your word reminds us that I know the prayers and thoughts I have towards you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and to give you a hope. Your word reminds us that your, your, your power is great. Your word reminds us, oh God, that nothing, not death nor life, nothing can ever separate us from your love. Your word reminds us that if anyone is lacking wisdom, all we have to do is ask. But don't doubt you, oh God. Father, we just say thank you that we can trust your word, Father. And we thank you that we can call you Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace in the midst of so much chaos, so much confusion, so much discord just happening throughout this world from the politics of this upcoming election. So much discord, so much racism, Father. We thank you that we can still go to the God of peace, oh God. We thank you that you are still the one that holds the heart of the king in your hands. And so you can change the mindset of people. So, Father, do it again. Father, we thank you that you are still Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Father, we thank you that you're still able to heal cancer as we are celebrating those who have overcome breast cancer and all types of cancers in, in this month of October, Father, we thank you that you're still able to heal. That nothing is too hard for you. Father, so we thank you that even right now that you're healing somebody who the doctor has already said that you're at the end stage. Father, we thank you that you can turn things around and that you're able to restore the body cells, oh God. We thank you that you can allow the heart and, and the lungs and everything that has started to dissipate, you can put it back together, oh God. If you were able to put flesh on dry bones, we know that you can still put things together, oh God. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So Father, we thank you that we can decree and declare in the name of Jesus that even miracles still happen. Even great works still happen. Our God is a great God. And there is nothing too hard for him. Father, we thank you for healing. We thank you that you're in the NICU. We thank you that you're in ICU. We thank you that you're in the hospice facilities. We thank you that you're in the mental facilities. Father, we thank you that you're in that dark room with that individual that's just trying to take all the pills. Father, we thank you. And then we ask that you would heal our mind that the devil has tried to take Room and residency in, oh God. Father, we thank you that you can do it. You can do it, God. You've done it. Do it again, Father. Father, we thank you that nothing is impossible with you, God. Father, we pray right now that you will continue to restore relationships and families. Father, that you would keep the minds of everyone that you have bound together, oh God, in the spirit of matrimony and, and love and marriage, oh God. That you would turn things around. That you remove and set up a standard against the enemy that seeks to divide these families. We thank you, Father, that you're able to do that as well. Because you are a restorer. And we thank you that you're doing it even now. Father, I pray over every church that is open and assembled with the goal in mind of preaching the uncompromising gospel. Father, that your word will be covered and saturated in your vessels, oh God, that when it comes out, oh God, it will come down and it will rain smooth like oil, oh God. The 
that the ears of your people will be open not to hear a cotton candy message, oh God, but to hear a word from you that will correct, convict, and reconnect us to you. Father, we thank you for Pastor Reed right now. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that he will stand strong. That he would not rely on his own intellect. But he would lean on your everlasting arm to share what you have given to him for this season of our lives as we seek to move forward in your glory. Father, we love you and we thank you for opening up his mouth, for making his mind uncluttered, oh God. And his heart ever receptive, constantly exchanging and talking to you all the way. That you would get the glory and that others will know that Jesus saves. That he saves to the utmost. Father, we thank you even now for your power and your presence. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen.
he's your comfort. That you can find resolution in him. How do you know that he's your comfort? Because the song reminds us that his spirit lives within us. We all are children of God. And so we're grateful for the confident spirit of the Lord. One thing we know about that confidence, the Bible reminds us that he will teach us things, that he will bring things to our remembrance. And so we're grateful that his spirit lives within me. It's my victory. The person that's next to you. It is not your mother's victory, your father's, your children, your spouse. It's my victory. It's a personal thing at this moment. If the Lord has ever made a way for you, if the Lord has ever opened the door for you, if He ever restored some things to you. He's kept you where you didn't want to be kept. He's changed some things even you didn't want him to change, but he knew it was best because it's his victory. It's my victory. You're standing here this morning because of the Lord, because of the Spirit of God. you out, you got a right to, to, to praise and worship him. It's your victory. If he saved you for some things, it's your victory. If he delivered you from you, it's your victory. I thank you, God.
Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. David from that day forward. 
And it happened on the next day that the distressing spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied inside the house. So David played music with his hands as at other times. But there was a spear in, the, in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the spear for he said, I will pin David to the wall. But David escaped his presence twice. Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. Well, Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And for these few moments, I want to preach and teach on the thought they switched up on me. They switched up on me. We introduced to, with David to David in First Samuel the sixteenth chapter. Preached about that a few weeks ago. How he was anointed king of all Israel at a young age. Chapter seventeen of First Samuel. The children of Israel are at war. With the Philistines. And this great warrior of the Philistines. By the name of Goliath. Is raising havoc. On the people of God. He's mocking them. He's talking bad about them. He's challenging them. If anyone. Is big and bad enough. To come against me. Let them come. We're informed that all the soldiers. Of the children of Israel were scared. One particular day, David was going to check up on his brothers. And while going to bring food to his brothers, he hear Goliath talk his noise. And David says, who is this unclean Philistine who defies the army of the Lord? And David, even though he was talking in confidence and assurance of who God was, his brothers were very upset with him. Because they felt like he came to make mockery of them, shame of them, because they didn't want to go out and ask him, do you have anything else to do? Why are you here? But these words made its way to King Saul. And King Saul asked to see this young man, and the young man said, I will go out and fight this unclean Philistine. Saul tells David, you are a youth, and this man, Goliath, has been a warrior since his youth. But then David began to testify how the Lord allowed him to conquer the bear and the lion. And he said that because I have prior experience with the Lord, that this too will come to pass, that I will destroy him. And so Saul obliged and allowed David to go. But before allowing David to go, Saul decides that he wanted to give David his armor. He gave him his spear, his sword, his armor. But David said, no, I can't go out and fight the enemy like this. In other words, I don't have no experience in fighting the enemy with something that you use. And I'm going to stop right there because if you have always defeated the enemy with the word of God and with prayer, don't try something new. You continue to use what works for you. The word of God works for you. The spirit of God is always sure. And the Bible tells us that David goes out there with what he's always used. A, sling, a slingshot and five stones. I've heard some people say, well, he had five stones just in case he missed, but that's far from the truth because you have to understand that there were five lords of the Philistine. There were five giants. And David had five stones indicating that he knew that he wasn't going to miss because he had the Lord on his side and you have to understand with the Lord on your side you will never miss if you're in his will you will always come out on top if you are in his will now if you're out of his will that's another conversation at the end of chapter 17 the Bible tells us that David defeats Goliath cuts off his head and brings it to King Saul to, to indicate the victory that they had and at that moment the Philistines were fearful and so they went away we begin in chapter 18 that everything is going well with David. David has become victorious in his battle. And now he is in close relationship with Saul's son by the name of Jonathan. The Bible tells us that they 
put a relationship is so close that they love each other like brothers. Yeah. And so Jonathan, understanding what David has, gives him his robe and his spear and his shield. Now one must understand that Jonathan was next in line to be king, but Jonathan understood that God had a special anointing on David's life, and people know when you have an anointing on your life, it is visible the way you carry yourself, how you move, how you talk, how you speak, how you treat others, and things were going well, but then all of a sudden, the situation turns, and Saul no longer had an infatuation for David. Yeah. Yeah. And so you ask, why did Saul no longer have an infatuation for David? Why did he switch up on him? Because he was one that promoted him. He was one that lifted up David. And now all of a sudden, he has nothing to do with him. But the text gives us three reasons why people will switch up on your life. Not just Saul switching up with David, but people switching up in your life because the reality is we've been living our lives and some people been on our side and all of a sudden they act funny with us. And the first thing that the text shows us is that people are able to see the Lord in you. People are able to see the Lord in you. The text begins by stating that David went everywhere that Saul has sent him. Now, one would have thought, because David was not done, he knew that he was anointed to be the next king, right? He knew he was Saul's replacement. At that moment, David could have said, why do I need to listen to you? You're just a placeholder for me. Why should I obey you when I know that I'm next in line? But what David understood is that even though he was next in line, it was not his time yet. And the best thing that he was able to show us is that even though you've been anointed and appointed for a position until you get there, you're still obligated to obey those who have the authority over you. Some of us feel that because I have more education than the person that's ahead of me, I shouldn't listen to them. I have more experience in the field. I shouldn't listen to you. Or I'm, I'm old enough to be your mother or your father. I shouldn't listen to you. But the reality is the Bible tells us to obey them. They have the rule over us. Not always, not necessarily just in the church, but even on the job. And I get it. Sometimes our bosses can get on that nerve and we don't want to listen to them. But the reality is we have to exhibit godliness. And sometimes exhibiting godliness is listening to them even though we know that whatever they suggest will not work. And so David, he obeys them. And the Bible says not only did he obey, but the Bible says David behaved wisely. Now, this behavior is not behaving in the form of action or in the form of character. No, I did my research, and when you read the word behavior in this text, it means that David was successful in everything that he did. All right. Okay, okay. Because he did it God's way, he had success. Because he obeyed. Right, right. He had success. Which tells me that obedience is better than sacrifice. Meaning that we can have great success if we obey the commandments of God. If God says render unto Caesar what is Caesar and to God what is God, we are obligated to do that. If he tells us we got to pay our taxes, don't buck the system. Pay your taxes. Be obedient. Because in doing so, you will behave wisely or you will have great success. And in doing so, Saul elevated David. David is here to overtake the kingdom. David behaved wisely. David was a young man. Saul saw that David was obedient. He saw that David was a good individual. 
he saw that David had courage. He saw that God was with him because he was able to defeat Goliath, the great warrior. And he said, because he's obedient, I'm going to set him over the army. Sometimes you haven't got elevated is because you got to check and see, have you really truly been obedient to what God has called you to do? Obedience will bring forth elevation. And the elevation. What also stood out in the text is the text says that David was accepted in the sight of the people, but also in the sight of the military. Okay. Okay. Go back. David was young, and the hardest thing for people to do is to accept a young person who's in authority. I, I, I've experienced that role 20 years ago and, and one of the hardest things is to do is to get people who's been in positions longer than you, to get people who serve the Lord longer than you, to get people who's older than your parents to submit and listen to you. But the Bible says because David did it God's way, because David was obedient, because David was submissive to the authority and leadership of Saul, he was elevated, and, the, and, and not only was he elevated, but the people accepted his elevation. Now, now you're saying that, that that's not important, but it is important because you have to understand that in that time, civilian life and military life, they didn't agree on the same issue. They were just like Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> they did not agree, and for all the people to accept then one had to sit back and say, for this to happen, it had to be only God in this person's life. And so when you're able to get two sides to agree and they never agree, it ain't got nothing to do with your intuition or your knowledge. No, it's the Lord that's on the inside of you that's working to resolve and to correct and to fix a situation. So when, when people switch up on you, when they decide they want to turn it back and change on you, and since they've been with you when everything was going well, you have to understand that they're able to see the Lord in you. But the reason why they also may turn their back on you is because some people are envious of your success. Some people are envious of your success. Watch this. The text says it like this in verse 7. It happened when they were coming home, returning from victory over the Philistines. Now, now let me let me stop right there before we move forward because most of us, if we are honest, we would like to sit and own our victory for an extended period of time. Absolutely. Okay. When God blesses you financially. You want to sit on that financial blessing. You don't want to get a financial blessing only for your car to break down. You, you don't want to get a financial blessing only to find out you got to go to the doctor and pay for more medicine and doctor bills. You, you don't want a, a financial blessing only for your, your plumbing to go out, your AC to go out. No, most of us, we want to sit on our blessing. David was coming from victory. We don't want to deal with mess after we came out some mess. Amen. The Bible says here at this moment, as soon as David and them came out, watch this, the women had come out to celebrate. Now, you have to understand that that was their custom. So don't, don't make it seem like this was something new. No, when when the children of Israel or whoever a country came out on top, most of the men was in the military. The women came out to meet them to celebrate the victory that God has allowed them to go. This is not the first time that the women came out to celebrate with the children of Israel. This is not the first time that they began to sing and dance. No, they was doing what they were supposed to do because they was excited to see their husbands come home. They was excited to see their sons come home. They was excited that somebody they didn't die on the battlefield. They did what they always did. But even in the midst of celebrating, something comes out that there are some people didn't expect. They begin to sing a song. They begin to sing a song. Saul killed his thousand because the text says they came out to meet and greet King Saul. And so begin respecting who he is. They say Saul killed his ten thousand. To his thousands. But 
Saul was angry. Now, I get it. We like Saul is angry. Why was he angry? Well, I believe because of what he said, if they would have said that Saul killed his thousands and David killed his two hundreds, he would have been fine with that. If they had said Saul killed his thousands, but David killed a hundred, he, he, he would have been fine with that. Uh, you know why? Because some people, this is funny, some people can't accept the fact that you're being elevated to the point where they are or you or you're surpassing them. As long as they're doing better than you, you can be on their team. You can ride with them. They can walk with you. They can smile in your face. Y'all can hold hands and go shopping. Go eat together. Go hang out. Go club and go to brunch together. As long as you they're doing better than you, y'all can do everything together. But the moment you begin to elevate, the moment your class status begin to change, then you begin to see people change up. Saul was fun. With David, though, that's why I gave you the intro. David and his son was close friends. Saul was willing to give David his armor. As long as David was up under him, as long as the accolades didn't match up, it was great. It was grand. But as soon as it was amazing, you know, as soon as they began to ascribe, as he says, 10,000, then there's a problem. And we can recognize these people in our lives. Yeah. You, you say, how do we recognize them? How do we recognize a hater? Because they began to say things something like, I see you trying to come up. Uh, they say, oh, you think you good now because you got this new job. Uh, they begin to say, I see you with your little car. I see you with your little house. I see you with your little boo. I see you got some new clothes now. I see God. They, they, because they, they, they weren't saying none of that before. They was okay with you be wearing hand-me-downs. They was okay with you making minimal wage. They was okay when they walked into your house, they saw holes and it was beat up. But the moment your house is fixed up, the moment you're driving something, the moment your bank account is, met, is catching up with that, then things begin to change. Saul began to change on David at that moment because at that moment he realized that he was no longer the head person with everything. He was no longer getting the highest accolades and what it did, it had played to his ego. And a lot of us it becomes an issue when we allow our ego to override the spirit of God that's on the inside of us because our ego will make us act crazy. Our ego will make us roll in the flesh. But if you have enough God Because Saul's statement was a statement of an individual who had self-esteem issues. Why do you say that? Because a confident person who's confident in the Lord can look at somebody and be grateful for another person's elevation. You can look at that person and say, God, I'm I, even though I don't have it, I'm grateful that you have it. I don't make the hundred thousand, but I'm grateful you make the hundred thousand. I don't have a two-story home, but I'm grateful that you have it because that person is confident in the Lord. They know that they're fearfully and wonderfully made in the Lord. They know that they're a child of God. They know that they're in a place where they are good in God. And so, when you're trying to figure out why people turn their backs on you, understand it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you because you never changed up. But their perspective of you changed. And one thing we cannot do is we cannot change a person's perspective of us. We can't make them think differently. No matter how hard we try, they go have they go perceive what they want to perceive. That's right. And so now what Saul did is he viewed David as a threat. And David didn't even know he was viewed as a threat. Yeah. He said, how you know? Because it brings us to my last point. Is that they can't stop your progress. They cannot. People cannot stop 
your progress. It's in the text. David didn't know because the Bible said the very next day. So that lets you know if it ain't one thing, it's another. David had just came through victory. He just came on top. And soon after that, he got to deal with something else. Thinking not strange concerning these trials and fiery trials and tribulations that come your way. Some of us, I know we want to breathe sometimes. God, give me a week off of testing. God, give me a, a month off of trial and tribulation. God, I've been going through it for 10 months. I got 30 minutes off and I got to deal with some mess again. God, I don't want to deal with nothing the next day. But David, after victory, had to deal with it the next day. The Bible said the next day an evil spirit comes upon Saul. What I've learned in life, and what we learned through the text, is that envy and jealousy, it give place or gives room for the devil to creep in. Yeah. The Bible says that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Meaning that if an individual is jealous of a person, he's willing to do any and everything to show that I will what they have. The reason why Saul was upset was he wanted that type of accolade. He wanted that type of recognition. He couldn't stand that David was getting more recognition than him. Bible said an evil spirit crept in. But I love also the Bible says that David played the harp for Saul as he always did often. Which put the onus back on us, children of God. You said, what you mean, Pastor? Just because a person treats you ugly doesn't mean you have to start treating them ugly because they treat you ugly all of a sudden. The Bible says David did as he always has done. I prayed, for, I played for him. When I was low, I'm still playing for him even though he hates it right now. You continue to pray for that person uh, even though you're praying when they was horrible. You pray for them when, they, when they're good. You pray for them when they're horrible. You don't stop being you because they stop doing what they're doing. No, because great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You are the child of God. You're the one that's called for to a better standard. You don't stoop down to the to the, to the, to the, to the of your enemy. No, you continue to hold firm. You continue to stick on God's word. You continue to pray. You continue to say good morning. You continue to tell that person how you're doing. You continue to smile in their face, knowing that you know that they're talking about you like a dog. You hold your head up. Yeah. The text says, while David was playing, that Saul had a spear. It's in the text of the Bible. He had a weapon in his hands ready to take David out. Yep. Now, you have to understand that the plan was significant because in chapter 16, when David prayed, when David played his harp, the evil spirit would leave Saul. Right. It would soothe Saul's right. spirit. Right. 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 And so David even though I believe he saw that Saul had a spear in his hand, he continued to do what God had called him to do at that moment, knowing that Saul was about to take him out. And you have to understand, I don't care if you continue to pray for that person, if you continue to show love to that person, that doesn't mean that person's going to change who they are. It doesn't mean they're going to have a change of heart and say, you know what, because that person prayed for me, I'm going to back off. No, if a person is possessed by an evil spirit, I don't care how much you pray for, I don't care how nice you are to them. You have to understand that they, their primary objective is to still dog you out, be mean you, talk about you, demean your name, slander who you are. But you have to understand that the enemy is doing what he's called to do. Why? Because the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy by any means necessary. But you got to understand that's not where it is that because we know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible says that I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Meaning that I, I know you mean me no good. I know you're talking about me. I know you hate on me. But I'm going to continue to pray for you. Why? Because the Lord is on my side. I'm going to continue to pray for you. Why? Because God has already anointed me to be king. And if the Lord has anointed me to be king, then he can't kill me right now. And you have to understand that, people of God. If the Lord called you to something and you ain't walking in that yet, you can't die until you serve your purpose. And 
And so, watch this, watch this, watch this, y'all. You got to understand this. The Bible says that Saul grabbed the spear and threw it away. But the Bible says something that sticks up. That David escaped, thank you, twice. Oh, okay, okay. That went over your head. He escaped twice. Uh, uh, uh. That's why I said what I said. The Bible says that he played the harp like always. Yeah. He escaped twice. Meaning that he played. He tried to kill him. He didn't succeed. At that moment, we wouldn't have went back. We'd have like, Lord, I know you didn't call me for this. Lord, this is too much. This person trying to kill me. God, I think it's done. But the Bible says he did it twice, meaning that David went back on his post. Yeah. 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 You know the people at your job don't like you. You go back to work and smile in their face. You know they're talking about you behind your back. They showed you who they are. They showed you their face cards. And you know they set up traps. But the traps ain't gonna work. Why? Because the Bible says no weapons that's formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up against me, you will condemn in judgment. Not only is the weapon won't it's gonna form and it won't prosper, but everybody that's talking about you, everybody that's bad about you, everybody that says you no good and lying on you, they will be condemned. You will condemn them in judgment, meaning that you will have the last laugh. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm grateful that that enemy won't have the last laugh. I'm grateful that my struggling is not in vain. I'm grateful that my suffering I will overcome it. Why? Because I walk with the Lord. He walks and talks with me. And he said in his word that we shall go through trials and tribulations. But he told me to be of good cheer. He didn't say he was going to feel good, but he said be of good cheer. He didn't say he was going to stay through it, but he said be of good cheer. He didn't say you weren't going to have some sleepless nights, but he said be of good cheer. Why? Because he's overcome the world. And if he's an overcomer and he's on the inside of you, then you are an overcomer also. Uh, and the Bible says this. The Bible says, the Bible says that at that moment, verse 12, I'm almost done. Verse 12, the Bible says that Saul, it's in y'all Bible, it's in my Bible, Saul was afraid of David. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ma'am, yeah. <laughs> think about something. Yes, yes, sir. You're the king. You, you, you have the nation at the palm of your hand. But you're afraid of somebody. He wasn't afraid of him because he had more degrees. Come on. He, he, he wasn't afraid because his, his, his subject and verbs agreed. He, he, he wasn't afraid because of his financial status. He, right. he wasn't afraid of him because he looked good because the Bible says Saul was a good looking man. He wasn't afraid of him because his bank account was small. He wasn't afraid of him because he had the right hookups. No, the Bible said he was afraid of him because the Lord was with you. And you got to understand if the Lord is with you, the enemy is afraid. Why? Because when your trials come your way, you know that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run thereof and they are safe. You know that the earth is the Lord and the foreigners thereof. You understand that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Why? Because he walks with me and he talks with me. He says that I'm his child. And so I have an understanding that the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear and whom shall I be afraid of? That's a person that has a relationship with the Lord. That's why Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, understanding that the devil in hell can't do nothing against me as long as I got the spirit of God on the inside of me. That's why Paul says that who shall separate me from the love of God? He says that I'm persuaded that life, nor death, nor distress, nor wife, nor husband, nor children, no job, no supervisor, no crackhead, no drug dealer, no money, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. I'm fully persuaded.
persuaded. And you got to be fully persuaded that the Lord has you. You got to be fully persuaded that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You got to be fully persuaded that nothing shall be impossible from my God. Is there anybody in here that's grateful that God has shown himself strong, that he's delivered you before, and he's been delivered you before, just like he did with David? He delivered him twice. He don't deliver you twice, and this ain't the only time he delivered David. David was in the cave where Saul was trying to kill him, and he couldn't find him. But David stood over Saul with the opportunity to kill him. And David looked at him and basically said, you know what? Vengeance is mine, and I will repay it, says the Lord. David could have handled it. You could have handled it your way, but put it in God's hand. Allow the Lord to vindicate you. Allow the Lord to open the door. strong in the midst of the enemy. Allow him to hold you together. Is there anybody that's grateful that the Lord is a strong tower, that the Lord is a refuge to them in a time of trouble? Is there anybody here? Yes, people will turn their back on them. Let them turn their back. Let them do what they do. Let them handle you. Let them do what they think they do and they think that they are prospering. Because the reality is, it will not prosper. And so when people turn their back on you, when they try to tell you you're not worthy, when you're trying to figure out why they changed, understand in what Mary Mary said. It ain't got nothing to do with them. It's the God in me. And if it's the God in you, let them change. Let them move around. They didn't need to be your acquaintance anyway. Get the squares out your circle. And so when people turn their backs on you, you have to understand that if they don't want to be around me, it must be something that's on the inside of me that don't agree with them that's on the inside. The Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? Your spirit is not messing with my spirit. I serve the Lord my God. You serving the world. We can't walk together. People are envious of your growth. And if they are, if you're around people and they don't want to see you grow, they don't want to see you prosper, they don't want to see you advance, you need to kick them out to the curb anyway. Let them treat you differently because they didn't need to be in your circle anyway. And they turn their backs on you because they understand and realize they can't stop what the Lord has for you. If the Lord said it, shall he not do it? He's a God that cannot lie and a God that shall not repent. If God said you're going to make it out, you're going to make it out. If God said you're going to be healed, you're going to be healed. If the Lord said he's going to set you free, he's going to set you free. Sometimes it may happen in the twinkling of an eye. Sometimes it may take a process. But you got to understand that in the Lord is saying amen. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but if you're going through, hold on to God's never change of hand. Understand that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Understand I've never seen his seed beg for bread. And if he's the same God back then, he's the same God right now. He still heals. He still delivers. He still set free. He still breaks chains. He still opened doors. He still opened windows. He still closed doors. He still blocked the enemy. He is still God. So my clothes and let them switch up. Let them do what they do. You have to understand, I don't need friends anyway. I need godly people. I'm a friend of God. And he calls me friend. I'm grateful. That y'all can have this world. You can prosper here on earth. But if I have the Lord on my side, I have all that I need. And those who I gain in this way, in this walk, we go say the same thing, we go promote the same things, and we go build each other up. So let them change up. And when they change up, don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. Because the reality is they was already showing you something. You just didn't have discernment to see the sign. Now that you have the discernment to see the signs, 
Let them go and continue to move in the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. Father, I thank you. Because God, with your word, you've shown us, God, that people can love us one minute. They can try to take us off the next. Because it was only around us for convenience. It was only around us as long as things was going their way. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, God, to surround your children with like-minded people, God. Because yeah, yeah, we understand and know that we can't live this life by ourselves. To surround us with people who want to see us grow and are not envious if we surpass them. Who desire to see God move in our lives. Who desire to see God work miracles in our lives. And not be envious of what the Lord is doing, but to celebrate. Understanding that God is not a respective person, that if he did it for them, if he did it for me, he'd do it for them also. But God, I thank you on your word that lets us know that it's not us. And people turn their back on it, but it's the Spirit of God that dwells on the inside of us. And so, Father, give us the courage to walk in your Spirit, to walk in authority, to walk in you. And Father, we bless and we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Maybe there's somebody here viewing us online who don't understand why people turn their backs on them, who don't understand why they're going through what they're going through. Why people are leaving them? Why it feels like they're by themselves? They can't make it on the island by themselves. I want to invite this person or you to a relationship with Jesus, understanding that Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. That He's with you every step of the way. He said, Pastor, I know who the Lord is. But I need to connect with a church family. If you're looking for perfect leaders, encouragement temple is not the place for you. We're far from perfect. But we serve a God who's constantly perfected us on a daily basis. We don't claim, we we'll never claim to be perfect. If you're looking for real encouragement, Temple is the place for you. Those of you viewing us online, leave, us, leave a message in the chat. Amen. We might have a transition to our announcements. We'll receive Pastor Chris as he come forth and give us our announcements. Y'all receive her as she comes. still hold on when they switch up on us. Uh, announcements, just want to remind you all that we will have Bible study uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, last Wednesday of October, the month of October. Uh, please continue to join in. 7 o'clock p.m. is when you can see Pastor Reed and get a preview from time to time of even his little assistant is just decides to show up every time doing Bible study yes. for some odd reason. I'm talking about Chloe. She always just shows up. Shows up at the best time. Uh, right in the middle of Bible study. Not in the beginning when, you know, he's trying to get everything together. But it's smack dab in the middle. Uh, but we want you to join in with uh, Pastor Reed. That's the opportunity that you have to ask questions. So please utilize that time. Commit that time to Bible study. We commit to everything else during the week. And so if we could commit to Bible study as best as you can, please do so. Show your support even as he seeks to teach uh, those that view in the membership here we, uh, at um, Encouragement Temple, um, the Word of God. And then don't read your Bible just on Wednesday. Read it throughout the week. You know, that's like going to war without any weapons. It's like, you know, you never, you know, you don't even learn how to shoot the gun. You just got it. You don't know how to 
Use a slingshot, you just got it. So when somebody come up on you, you don't know what to do. Uh, so just make sure you commit yourself to that time. And then we want to remind you all also to please go out and vote. This is definitely a, a employment for our young people as well to go out and be informed as best as you can. Be informed, go out and vote right now. Early voting is open. The opportunity to vote is now. We, I've heard stories about people going out, I guess, on the first day of early voting, and it was just a hot mess. Um, and that's because there was so many people out there. So that's a good thing. Uh, but So definitely pack your patience with you wherever you go. Go out and vote. And don't be discouraged because of the laws, but go out and vote. Because we don't want you to have to complain that, hey, my, my thing didn't pass, but you didn't even go out and vote. So just make sure that you're informed. This is not just about the president. It's everything else that's under that. The other president is a big deal. But you know, when you if you own come on now. When you look at representatives, when you look at your and you own a house and you look at your taxes went up, and that's because you didn't went straight whatever you wanted to do, and you didn't look at what that tax rate is associated with, you wasn't informed and you wonder why your your notice high. Uh, it's because you went in uninformed. Right. So make sure that you are informed even as you vote. Uh, make sure you look at all these different propositions that are trying to be passed. Because some of them may definitely impact you directly. Your employment again impact a whole lot of things. So please just be mindful. Go out and vote, Calvin. Make sure you go vote. Robbie, make sure you go vote. Um, doing that. <laughs> He's like, what about her? Make sure she go vote too. <laughs> Look, y'all just need to get in the car and everybody, all the young folks just go vote together. Right, right. You know, as y'all are going to the store, just detour straight to, to the voting polls. But anyway, uh, we want to make sure that you go out and vote. Continue to celebrate those that have uh, survived breast cancer. Uh, continue to make sure you know, you let them know that you care, uh, that you appreciate them and their strength that they have and their endurance. Continue to also... Um, be mindful of just even as the weather is changing. You know, we got you got different illnesses that are going around, so please. <laughs> it's just so much stuff going on. Uh, please be aware. Uh, and, uh, yeah, get your vitamins, do something healthy with yourself. Um, lastly, we want to make sure that everyone gets involved in giving. Uh, with Encouragement Temple. We have the QR codes on the back wall. Please utilize the PayPal as well as a Zelle. If you're not familiar with how to utilize Zelle, please see Pastor Reed or myself and we will help, help encourage you and educate you on the Zelle functionality and how that works. We want to make sure that no one misses the opportunity to give um, here at Encouragement Temple. Again, this is not about us as leaders. It's about you partnering with uh, with God in regards to your obedience when he says bring both the tithe and the offering. So please do that. If you want an envelope, just lift your hand and Evan will come around. Uh, Big E, then he's going to come and he's going to uh, receive your offerings right after our prayer. God, I thank you uh, for everything that you've done for us and the ability to give back to you. Father, we pray that every uh, individual and every household that is assembled here, oh God, and represented here, that they would give according to the cheerfulness of their heart and of the spirit and their love towards you. Father, we ask that no one would give out of compulsion. Father, but they would know that they cannot beat you given no matter how hard they try. They will remember all the ways you made for them and they would show it in their uh, the act of giving on today, knowing that it is an act of worship. Please return back to those some 30, 60, some 100 fold according to your will. Just remind them that you got them. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. You're going to have uh, Big Ethan is going to come around and receive the gifts. And then I just got just one, one quick, uh, just real brief announcement. Some of you may have received communication uh, over the weekend with respect to uh, having all hands on deck uh, with, the, with, the, with the upkeep uh, here on the grounds. And so we hope you have the opportunity to read that communication. Uh, if, you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look for an email from Encouragement Temple on Friday. And just uh, make sure that you just review it. Uh, set aside some time to help support Pastor Reed and I as we continue to um, keep the grounds here at the church. We, need, we can't do it all. We need y'all's help. And so we ask that you all would, would be intentional on helping us even as we seek to lead. Um, I'm going to remind you all of our motto, uh, what Evan is going to. Come on, Evan. Y'all, 
I wasn't going to do the end of this if I didn't let them. Come on. You got such a big boy voice. Encouragement Temple is the place where Christ is edified through our worship and our witness, where believers are empowered through the priest gospel and discipleship, where the community is enlightened by God's saving and priesthood. Amen. All right. All right. Please go for yourself according to the announcements and be encouraged by our motto. I'm going to place you back in the hands of Pastor Reed. He's going to share the blessing and the benediction. Amen. Let us govern ourselves to those announcements. Uh, if y'all desire to early vote, if you live in Harris County, I do know that the North Harris location, uh, Long Star North Harris, not no waiting line. I was able to go in and be out within 10 minutes. And so if you're in Harris County, uh, you go to Long Star North Harris area, uh, across from Nimitz High School, that Long Star, the waiting line, I was able to go in and come right out in 10 minutes. I was done. And so uh, that's for early voting. Because you know, when you miss early voting, then you have to go to your assigned location. And Pastor Chris taught me that. Um, and so if y'all go on early vote, if you want to vote next week, it ends on Friday, on the 1st. So we encourage you all just go there. Yo, your driver's license has to show that you stay in Harris County. You can't just tell people that. Yeah, but no, let's make it because some people like I live in Harris County. But their driver's license has a different address. And so make sure your driver's license address is a Harris County address. Amen. I think that's it. Amen. Let us stand. Next Sunday is first Sunday, y'all. First Sunday in the month of November. The year has flown by, but God has been good to us. But well, the minister Lord bless us today, y'all. May she bless us. Let the Lord use you. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God. We thank you for laughter, God. We thank you for your, your joy, God, that you've given us, Father. We thank you. God, just for fellowship. Father, we ask you, Jesus, as we leave this place, that you be with us, God, that you protect us, that you guide us, keep us safe from harm and accidents, Father. And God, allow us to get to our various homes and destinations safe. And let us allow our homes to be the way it was, how we left it, safe, sound, and in one piece. To the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to the only wise God, be glory under the being power. Wait a minute, somebody say, also let it be better than what it was. How we left it. So God, make it better. Make it better. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. We'll see y'all this Wednesday for Bible study virtually. Peace.